Hello and welcome to the launch event for the leadership of the SEND Network. I'm so, so delighted to be here speaking to you all as members of the Church of England and especially this network, which I have a personal connection to, obviously with the special educational needs and disabilities portion. My name is Amjad Ali. Um, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for 17 years now. I'm also a leader in a qualified SENCO. I've been doing that for nine years. Um, and one day a week on a Friday for the last seven to eight years, I've been a speaker, trainer, consultant, whatever you want to call it or however you want to phrase that role. And I'm also the co-founder of the national charity BAME Ed Network. So what am I doing here today? Why am I here to talk to you? What would I like to get out of today's session? So be it that I'm here virtually, so apologies that I can't be there face to face. I would have loved to have been there talking to you all live. But of course, I work four days a week, so I'm currently sat in school. So I've recorded this in advance to talk to you all about this notion of minority ethnic and the involvement within the special educational needs and disabilities sector. So we've seen graphics like this, right, where we thought about this process of inclusion. We talk about inclusion a lot. We talk about this idea of inclusion, the ideal of inclusion. But what I want to talk to us about is what's the difference between exclusion, segregation and integration? I mean, ultimately, this graphic by openfuturelearning.org is absolutely phenomenal because the I decide element is an element I haven't really seen or considered overtly enough. I decide whether I segregate, integrate or include. And that could be both in a positive and negative way. I'm deciding about segregation. I'm deciding to integrate. I'm deciding to be inclusive. But if I'm not deciding to do those things, what's the effect and the after effect and the damage of those elements? So essentially we know special educational needs follow and affect and help and support and negate and invalidate and cause and support lots of different people, lots of different ages, lots of different uh, qualifications. It's absolutely indiscriminate in its application of neurodivergences or processing or whatever condition or spectrum disorder one might have. However, is that how the world views SEND provision? Is that how the world views special educational needs? Now, I've got pictures of adults here, just random Google images of lots of different minorities, ethnic minorities, races, probably religions, sexualities, etc. The intersectionality of that image is lots and you could delve into that in much more detail. However, the reason why there's an uh, image of adults and not children is because I want us to think about our perception of our young people that we are in charge of and our young people that we teach and our young people that we support. Because one of the things that we need to understand and we need to understand really strongly is that we are all biased. Now, be it biased in a negative way, be it biased in a positive way, that's all subjective in terms of the identification of negative and positive. But we do all need to address the bias in ourselves to change the outlook for our schools in the future. Now, that as a statement is because we're biased towards poor handwriting, we're biased towards appearance, we're biased towards hairstyle, we're biased towards gender, we're biased towards braces. So with all of this bias at play, how do we deal with and how do we manage special educational needs? And something for us to really consider, why are we talking about special educational needs in the context of minority ethnic individuals is because opening statement there, 35.4% of pupils are from a minority ethnic background. Now you can see the stats, I've referenced the stats for you in the PowerPoint presentation that you'll have available, but you could see the breakdown. So 34.8% in primary schools up from 33.9, 34.1 in secondary schools up from 33.1, 31 in special schools up from 30.5 and 25.1 up from 24.6. So what we've got to really consider in terms of this area of need is that our school populations across the United Kingdom are increasing in terms of minority ethnic students. Therefore, our understanding of special educational needs must improve in minority ethnic backgrounds. Now, the limited research out there, now I stress limited because there really is a limited amount of research, 
I mean, for example, I, I saw a tweet very recently that showed that in entire 2021 and 22, there's been less than five papers in total on special educational needs. And in those five papers in total, zero addressed the issue of minority ethnic over or under representation. However, if we track back through studies, we've got this piece of, uh, this piece of research, send issues of over and under under representation. So we've got from pages 34 to 37, pupils from two traveler groups are two times more likely to have an identified SEN than white British. Bangladeshi, Indian, Asian, other and Chinese pupils are around half as likely to be identified as SEN as white British. Black African pupils are also less likely to have identified SEN than white British. So there's an issue with the identification of SEN but I wonder what happens then as a result of that. We know that the overrepresentation then occurs in permanent or exclusions. So if we've got an under identification and send needs, is the issue just being pushed to, this is just behavioral choices and behavioral needs. So in the 1990s and in 2002, also confirmed in 2004 and confirmed more recently as well, black Caribbean boys are overrepresented in permanent exclusions. You've got Pakistani children overrepresented for hearing impairments, visual impairments, per, uh, physical, ment uh, physical moderate learning difficulties, and specific learning difficulties result in underrepresentation. So all of this study, all of this research shows the under and the overrepresentation and under identification. And I've got other page references for you there. We had further research from the University of Oxford, ethnic disproportionality in the identification of special educational needs. I've got some key information from this study that showed that ethnic disproportionality in the identification of SEND is prominent still. And there was an idea and a plea for something called a public sector equality DT. We love an acronym, so the PSED, where local authorities and multi-academy trusts and schools must have due, due regard to this and should monitor the ethnic disproportionality in the identification of SEND. However, does that happen? Ask yourselves, what's the representation of SEND within your own schools? And then if you're thinking, well, those are quite outdated papers, whatever that means, here is a more recent paper by Darren Wallace and Remy Joseph Salisbury, 2022, which talks about how still is a Black Caribbean child made educationally subnormal in the English school system. So you've got papers out there, you've got studies out there, you've got information out there. Now, anyone that's sitting there thinking, well, Amjad, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is, we just need best possible provision, which is high quality first teaching. Absolutely right, we do need high quality first teaching. However, we do need to tackle the systemic issues within this and not the topical nature of this. So the systemic issues are, how diverse is our curricula? How diverse is the curriculum that you are delivering? How accessible is the curriculum that you are delivering? When we move past the curriculum, what about if I asked you this question? How diverse is your provision? Do you understand how and what the differences are within working with different parents and carers? So do you have policies for working with carers, parents, parents and carers from different backgrounds and different communities? Because remember, we are more than just representation. Are you involved in the community? Do you understand your community? Now I'm chucking lots of reflexive questions for you because I'm obviously on record, so you could press pause, you could rewind, you could speed up, etc. But essentially what I'm asking you to is come up with and think of how can we challenge the issue of over and under representation? How can we model and showcase the benefits of diversity? So the Baymed Network, of course, plug for our free website with free resources for you to use. Do check it out, do have a look. Also consider what you can do to enable yourselves and enable your departments and enable your communities to really make a difference in this field. Questions I would ask you all to consider is, do you ever audit your SEND register? Have you got a breakdown by ethnicity on your SEND register? Do you compare your exclusions by race, by ethnicity? The government more than recently got rid of the idea of us having to declare, say, for example, racist incidents in school. However, I would question the link between racist incidents, exclusions, and identification of SEND. Is there an under and over representation 
or is there an under or over identification based on ethnicities within your school? Lots and lots of information for you to cover there in 10 minutes. My name's Amjad Ali. I'm on Twitter as Teach Lead A Ali. Do drop me a tweet if you'd like to find out more. Thank you so much.